Thank you all for coming. Um, so I'm Simon Barrett. Um, I'm your host for the day. Uh, I also run Game Makers, which is a, a shared workspace that rents out desks and offices to games companies, VR companies. Uh, we're sort of based through here and around this building. Um, I was asked to organize a few gaming and VR events as part of Leeds International Festival. Uh, I felt that a careers kind of focused event would be really important, uh, something very useful. Uh, and I invited, invited a bunch of great speakers along today um, for them to talk about how they got into games development, what their sort of roots were, what their jobs consist of. Uh, and we've got a good representation of roles. However, there are a few other job roles and everything that we couldn't represent because we've only got a few hours to sort of go through things today. Um, hopefully we'll get on to covering some of those later on the panel. Uh, you know, things like sound and music production, uh, level design, general production and project management, which is pretty important, uh, quality assurance, testing, um, and the various aspects that that takes, uh, marketing, and then huge numbers of more roles like analytics and everything else. Uh, so we do have experience, some of us, of those roles as well, uh, or know quite a bit about them, or have hired people in those roles. Uh, so if you've got questions on those things in, in particular, please uh, shout out on the panel later. Um, so to kick things off, I'm just going to run through my background really quickly. Um, I did plan on doing a full presentation and realized we'd put me with a really small time slot. So mine's going to be talking very, very fast and let the more interesting speakers uh, chat about their paths. Uh, so I had an early start. Um, I was five years old and I got uh, a CPC 6128, uh, which was an amazing computer. Um, not quite full 3D graphics and everything like it is nowadays. Um, it was quite expensive at the time, so I was very fortunate to get it. Um, at the age of five, which when my daughter got an iPhone when she was five, to be honest, so not, not quite the same kind of fairness there. Um, I played games like Dizzy, which was a great series by the Oliver Twins, um, who previously ran Blitz games for many, many years as well. Uh, Barbarian, which was just an awesome uh, fighting game. I mean, compared to Mortal Kombat, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, Road Blasters, which was an arcade classic, moved to the CPC as well. Uh, so I decided very soon after playing those games that I wanted to make games. So I was doing the thing of typing in um, code from magazines and then going through changing things and just experimenting. And it was my mum that really got me into programming. She used to code punch cards um, from accounting, uh, in accounting departments at um, a place over in Hull. And so she taught me basic and I kind of got into it from there and taught myself assembly language and other kind of different languages at a fairly young age. Um, so it just started off as the simple kind of hello world, go to 10, looping over and over. Um, and then in the 90s, I was very lucky to switch over to the PC and got on the internet quite early, which not everyone kind of got onto the internet in 92, 93. Um, so I met a lot of people uh, online via um, internet relay chat, which is kind of your, your modern day Slack or whatever it would be, and news groups and things um, before you had real sort of forums and places to chat to people. And the demo scene was kind of a big influence on, on how I got into programming graphics and rendering techniques and things like that. Um, so basically, the demo scene, they just, you don't produce an interactive experience. You produce a really graphical um, and musical kind of, uh, more of a music video than an actual game, to be honest, which just shows off your skills in terms of your programming. <clears throat> so you get cool images like this. And a lot of the guys who... I learned from were kind of four to five years older than me and went, oh, either worked in the industry already or moved on to be quite influential in the industry. So that kind of helped in terms of the early network across the world that I had uh, as kind of mentors as a programmer. So then when I was 16, um, just ignore this bit if you want to go into formal education. Um, obviously, I taught myself for many, many years from being six till, till this age. And with the internet and the support from those people, I was supported by a few people on these internet places and offered a job in Bradford. So I moved from Hull uh, to Bradford when I was 16, quit my A-levels uh, and moved across because I felt that like going through the formal education route um, that I'd spend a lot of years not getting experience and not working with the people that I'd already been learning from. Uh, so we worked on a few different games, the Pineapple, uh, I was writing their tech for them, so everything from networking to uh, the rendering to drawing the images on the screen to the gameplay and everything. Uh, we developed a few games, none of which ever got released. Um, so we had a very uh, nice investor who put a lot of money into different things we were doing. So Crash was kind of a streaming world 3D uh, city with lots of interactive objects. You could do anything you wanted in the city. Sounds a bit like Grand Theft Auto, but this was before Grand Theft Auto actually turned 3D. Unfortunately, we weren't very good at the business side of things, and they refused to hire an agent, so therefore we didn't get this signed of anyone. Uh, but it was pretty awesome. Uh, another shot from Crash there as well. Uh, Bloody Waters, which is one of the best games never to be released. Um, 
it's you basically play as a shark, uh, and then you go around killing everyone. Um, and you also have the cult of the shark, who are people who sacrifice themselves to the shark to give it energy and to do things for it on land. And you can swap between the cult of the shark and the shark. Um, there is actually a YouTube video online with some like 300,000 views of Bloody Waters. I'm not sure which publisher leaked that to the YouTube, but it's it's quite nice that it's kind of seen as a nice unreleased title. Um, there is a story which I won't mention on here, on video, on the internet, about the uh, the publisher that messed us up and stole our ideas for another game to do with sharks. Uh, but if you compare the two, it's very similar. Um, I'm pretty sure they go out of business now, so that's fine. I won't be sued for libel. Um, zero, just so other shots are there. So look, awesome. Look, <laughs> you could actually do that as well, full spinning through the air, taking people off things. It was great. Uh, zero G, which was pretty much shouldn't have been released really. It was kind of wipe out on skateboards, uh, Marty McFly, Back to the Future style. Um, and it looked nice in concept, but it wasn't really that as good as it should have been. So um, as I mentioned, the business side of Pineapple Interactive wasn't really as good as it should have been. I was sent out to pitch with the uh, founder of the company, and we were both programmers. So I kind of grew into the role of being the guy uh, to pitch titles to publishers and to talk to investors and such. And I gradually got quite good at it. So. Um, I realized then at that point we were bringing so much work for hiring, and so that's paid work to do things for other companies, that we should maybe um, think about not working for a salary and do our own company instead. So I quit Pineapple Interactive, set up Ford or Lemon in 2005. Uh, we ran for 10 years, we ran 35 staff with contractors on top of that, um, made about 40 or 50 different projects, some of which we can't talk about due to uh, contracts and such like that, but a few of the more recent ones we did, so we did Joe Danger for Hello Games, um, we ported that across to a few platforms to them while they were doing No Man's Sky. Uh, Table Mini Golf was one of three augmented reality titles we did for Vita uh, at launch. And 101 Ways to Die was the most recent game for the Lemon released. Uh, so that's available on PC, PS4, Xbox One. Um, so after that, um, I did a few other different uh, things for a little bit. So some work at University of Leeds, which is how I got more into the skills and education side. Um, we worked on Rocky Horror um, Theatre Show game. And then this is my new studio, Cooperative Innovations, which is doing social VR and AR games. So this is Raiders of Erda, which is an online cooperative RPG game. Uh, so in it, you and three friends will uh, jump into dungeons or sieges or whatever battles you want. It's in, all in VR, uh, and so you log in, see all the other people who are there in VR with you, and you'll either be fighting melee combat, ranged, casting magic, uh, getting through traps and things, and basically fighting through the world, getting new loot and fixing quests and stuff like that. It's all the kind of typical RPG stuff you'd expect, but it's in VR and you are actually doing the moves yourself rather than just pressing buttons to do it. I'll just wait till the archery bits on because that's kind of cool as well. Uh, so on this game, so we're currently a uh, full team, uh, full time team of seven right now with contractors on top. We're expanding with four or five people in the next few weeks. Um, we've got two other titles based on the same online multiplayer technology we use for this as well. Um, and we're based in, mainly based in Leeds, but we've got people scattered around the country just working remotely for us as well. A bit of archery. Let's wait for this guy to fall down the stairs because it's brilliant. <laughs> Built it up too much now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. cool, so that's me, thank you. Um, and I'm going to introduce uh, Catherine to do uh, the first talk. Um, and we'll do some quick questions after everyone's talk and then save any other ones up for the panel at the end. Cool, thank you.